be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, talking about Jesus, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word as we look to him in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this passage of scripture. We thank you for this story in your scripture. We thank you for this pericope in your scripture. We thank you for these verses. We thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, that you would use this word today as a blessing to us, that you would instruct us, that you would give us wisdom, and that you would teach us what we need to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. There comes a time in this Christian walk when he or she is just tired of the same old thing every day. Can I get one witness in there? Amen. Amen. There comes a time in all of our lives when we are looking for something different. Something that will take us to the next level. Yes, yes. Sometimes that next level is not up, but down. down. Many times the change you need is less, not more. Mm. You may want to drop down to a low, lower level, watch this, like downsizing your home, downsizing your car downsizing your job. I don't want to work this hard anymore. The gas is killing me on this big Cadillac. This Lincoln is good. good. You, you with me in? Sometimes, sometimes the next level is you want to downsize. Hmm. Well, I said, you may even want to downsize your relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all ain't praying with me. You may not want to be in a serious relationship right now in this time of your life. Sometimes you want to downsize your relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, I don't want, I don't want us to be mutually exclusive anymore. Mm -hmm. I want us to be, we just friends. Mm -hmm. I just want us to be all right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I might want to go out to dinner with somebody else. Can you with me? Sometimes the, 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 the next level might not be the upper level. It may be the lower level. Every now and then, if you want to stimulate, or we wanted to stimulate ourselves mentally, we would read a challenging book. Or start an intense hobby. Or take a course in school. Or maybe even pursue a degree. That's if you want to stimulate yourself mentally. Some of us, we want to stimulate ourselves financially. So we take on a second job. Or we increase our hours on our regular job. Or we go for that management position. I'm talking about stimulating yourself financially. Or maybe start a side hustle. Or, or here's one I, 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 I made. You might want to start a hustle within a hustle. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, 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 you may be fixing cars, but now you might want to Sell some cars. Oh, okay. So now you fix them and you sell them because that's your hustle within a hustle. Are y'all praying with me? Yeah. Or, or, or you work on your job from 9 to 5, but at 5.30 you go off on another job within that job. That's a hustle within a hustle. Then to stimulate ourselves physically, we may go on a diet or change the way we eat or join a spot or get a gym membership or pump some iron. Some of us may even take an exercise class or do some jogging 
I'm talking about stimulating yourselves physically. The good news is that everything I mentioned is at least obtainable. Say anything about that. Amen. You can obtain any one of those things I mentioned. Am I right about it? Probably right. The not so good news <laughs> is that all of these things require you to step outside of your boat, which is the title of our sermon today, Stepping Out of Your Boat. Now would be a good time to ask yourself, what is my spiritual boat? Am I satisfied with the spiritual boat that I am in? We talked about finances, we talked about physical, we talked about relationship, we talked about health. But what about your spiritual being? What, are you willing to step outside of your spiritual boat? Because some of us are just comfortable in the spiritual boat that we are in. Say amen. amen. I can tell when I look at the expressions on some of your faces. If I were to walk up to you and say, listen, I need you to work over here in this particular ministry. Well, your physical posture might tell me that uh, I just asked you to step outside of your comfortable boat. Alright. Come on, Dad. What is it you need me to do now? Well, I need you to do something. Are you with me? <laughs> but you, you're comfortable in your spiritual boat. Come on, I go to church on Sunday. What else y'all want from me? You want me to get there and do something? God forbid I should ask you to stop out on a weekday to do, you know. You with me? Some of us are asking ourselves, what does a Christian do to stimulate themselves spiritually? And I am so glad that you asked that question. Now in this particular passage of scripture, I see the fright, I see the faith, I see the fall, and I see the fervor. I see the fright, I see the faith, I see the fall, I see the fur. Stay with me. First of all, know this. Jesus had just get, got finished feeding 5,000 men Amen. with five loaves and two fish. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Five loaves and two fish. He fed 5,000 men. And don't you remember after that, it was 12 baskets left over? Now, if there was 5,000 men there, how many women do you think might have been there? Another 5,000, right? And then how about the kids? Maybe another 5,000. So you got about 15,000, 12,000, more than five that he fed with five loaves and two fishes. You have to understand that math to God is topsy-turvy. Math to God is when you look at your pocket and it said, you look in your pocketbook and it said, you better not go outside. <laughs> you know, you looked at your pocketbook and said, I can't even afford to go on my step. I got $2 to my name, and they fighting in my pocket. <laughs> oh, who going to be the last one? <laughs> Am I right? right. <laughs> George Washington fighting George Washington. That's how broke I'm at. You got to do the math. You can't do your math. Your math doesn't work. God's math is five fish, five loaves of bread, Two fish feeds 5,000 men, 5,000 women, and I don't know how many children. Jesus had just got finished doing that. And verse 22 says, And straight away Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. So Jesus says to his disciples, Listen, I need y'all to do something. All y'all get in the boat, head over to the other side, and I'm going to dismiss the people. So he dismisses the people. The, the disciples are obedient. They get in the ship. They start heading toward the other side where Jesus had told him to go. And verse 23, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. Sometimes you got to come apart before you come apart. If Jesus, watch this, uh, watch this, June, if Jesus had to come apart to pray, you know you and I got to come apart sometimes. You got you to gotta, you gotta slice off a little piece of that busyness. You got to take a little time out of that business and say, you know what? I know what's going on in the job. I know what's going on in my family. I know what's going on in my life. But I got to take a little time off to come apart. Jesus went apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. 
But the ship, don't forget the ship that he sent, was in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Now here's what you need to understand about me. Listen to me. Listen to me real good. Listen to me real good. You can be doing the work of the Lord and run into a storm. Yes, 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 yes. As a matter of fact, if you're doing the work of the Lord, a storm is coming with it. That's why it's called Amen. work. Amen. It ain't called fun. It's not called pleasure. It's not called joy. It's work. When you're yes. doing the work of the Lord, you can. Didn't God tell them to go? Didn't Didn't God? Didn't yes. Jesus Himself instruct them to get in the boat and go to the other side? Yes. yes. Then how in the world are they running into some problems? Because with Jesus comes problems. That's right. Yes. It's a different kind of a problem. Yes. But the good news, Marquita, is the problems that you run into with Jesus. He will always solve them. I think Luther Van Gogh said, I'd rather have bad times with you than good times with someone else. I'd rather be beside you in a storm than safe and warm by myself. Y'all don't know the words of that. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Don't y'all try to sing. Don't y'all try to sing. Don't try. But, but I just want you to know, that I'd rather be with you in the midst of a storm. Yes. Come on, somebody. That's and amazing. safe and warm by myself. That's right. That's right. Ah, shalom, Baba. Oh, oh, Glory to God, I said. That's what I said. I have to find out what I said. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just uh, trying it out. You went here. <laughs> My first point of the day is the fright. The fright in verse 25. In verse 25. And in the fourth watch, now, for you, those of you who don't know, the Jews divided the day up into four sections. The fourth watch was between the hours of three and six. They, I mean, they divided the night into four sections. The, it started at six, six to nine, nine to twelve, twelve to three, three to six. You right. right. The fourth watch was between three and six a.m. Right, right. Right. The fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Now keep in mind, they were doing what Jesus told them to do, and they ran into trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, on, in addition to that trouble, here comes some ghosts rolling up on them walking on the sea. There's a problem right there. We ain't never heard of nobody walking on the sea. So Jesus comes to walking on the sea. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, guys. watch this. Here's what we, oh, I need to say this like Margie, watch. i tell you what we're not going to do. That's Margie, that's Margie. i tell you, here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to try to figure out. <laughs> we're not going to try to figure out. Now watch this, stay with me, y'all going to love this. Watch this, June. Whether he made the water harder so that he could walk on the water. All right, all right. Or whether he made his body lighter. So that he can walk on the water. That's what we're not going to figure out. That's what we're not going to do. We're not going to try to figure that out. Because don't forget, he was capable of walking through walls, right? Yeah. So he could become like matterless. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. So if he can become matterless, no matter, then no matter whether the water is soft or not. Am I right about it? Yeah, no matter. He, 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 either way, either way, he moonwalked. Am I right? So, we're not going to figure it out. That's what, according to Margie, this is what we're not going to do. <laughs> Verse 26, and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, we're talking about fright. We're talking about how scared. We're talking about how scared. They were troubled, saying, it is the Spirit. And they cried out for fear. That's the, that's the fright. For fear. But straight away, Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Saints of God, when you see something that is crazy or looks completely weird, like for example this pandemic. Y'all remember how weird this felt? I mean, we're getting past it now, but do you remember how weird this felt? You remember how jacked up it was? Some of us thought it was the end of the world. Some of us thought it was God's judgment. Some thought that the devil had taken over. 
Some thought it was just the end, the beginning of my end. Come here, you nippers. <laughs> some, some, some just thought it was, it was just over. Well, when you are really, really afraid, turn to Jesus, because he said, don't be afraid. It is I. Be not afraid. Not only until we talk about the fright, but let's take a look at the faith in verse 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, let me come unto you on the water. You see it? I took out the beat, beat, and thou. Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Now we'll notice, now look. He did not say, bid me to walk on the water, desiring to be big like Jesus uh, for the miracle's sake. He said, bid me come to thee mm -hmm. as desiring to be with Christ. Right. See, sometimes we do something that looks good, but it's for the wrong reason. Right. Sometimes we do things to be out front. Uh -huh. Sometimes we do things because we want people to see it. Did you see me do that? Mm -hmm. did, did you see? Hey, hey, are you fine? Did you see me preach that sermon? Child, I was all that, wasn't I? Oh, man, look here. They're going to they gonna have me back to preach that again. Yeah, they're going, yeah, because I can do that thing. Well, he wasn't like that. He was like, Lord, bid me to come unto thee. Peter just wanted to be with Jesus. Now watch this. Now here, now here you go. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Um, uh, uh, watch this. It, it isn't that the other disciples didn't desire Jesus to be with them. It's just they had a different personality than Peter had. They, 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 like, they like Jesus as much as Peter did. But Peter had one of those personalities that was up front, in your face. I take a chance. I don't care about it. I ain't worried about drowning and dying. I can swim and uh, I know about Jonah and the fish and all that. Fish swallow me. I'm going to eat that fish from the inside out. <laughs> First, I'm going to cut it like I did the boy with the ear. You understand? That was his personality. It wasn't, that, it wasn't that he loved Jesus any more than the rest of them. It was just that he handled things a little different than Jesus. So, so he was saying, bid me come unto you as desiring for Christ's sake and not for the miracle's sake. Because you can imagine getting back to shore and say, yeah, man, y'all see me? You see me out there walking on that water? Yeah, man, I walked that water. I did the slot, I did the moonwalk, the mashed potato. I was Y'all see me, right? Yeah. I was going that, that water for you. Only two people that walked in the water, Jesus and me. He wasn't in it for that. He was in it because he wanted to be near Jesus. And Jesus said, verse 29, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, now he is out of his comfort zone. Mm -hmm. In order to obtain greatness, in order to obtain goodness, in order to obtain righteousness, in order to obtain uh, kindness, in order to uh, uh, obtain certain things, you have to step out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know why? You want to know why we, some of us are bored? Because we keep doing the same old thing. You keep going, you get up, and, you, and you, first thing you do is turn that television on. Now that television had eight hours of your attention yesterday. What do you think that TV is going to do today? You got to turn that off and go on out on something else Go job somewhere if you're trying to build yourself up physically. You, 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 you follow me? Go work somewhere if you're trying to build yourself up financially. Go get your Bible if you're trying to build yourself up spiritually. Go do some missionary work if you're trying to build yourself up spiritually. Go sing a gospel song instead of turn off that other. You with me here? So, but the thing is, in order to accomplish anything great, you have to come out of your comfort zone. Mm. Peter came down out of the ship. Now, Peter was a fisherman, but he ain't walking on no water. <laughs> if he did, he would have been using a boat all his life. <laughs> he could swim, but that was the other thing, too. Now, here's another thing. Watch this. Now, watch this. Why would Peter be scared of not walking on the water? Okay. Okay, let me put it right here. Peter's a fisherman. Been in water all his life. So why would he care if all of a sudden he just wasn't on top of the water for a few moments? 
Well, let me tell you what I believe. I believe Jesus wouldn't allow him to swim. I believe Jesus wanted him to depend on him. I believe that his swimming tactics, his swimming, his swimming uh, attributes, his swimming acumen, his swimming uh, abilities went right out the window. Watch this. Because the Bible said he was afraid. Now, why would he be afraid and he's a fisherman? All he did was just go under the water. And he wasn't but so far under the water. I'm going to tell you why. Because he was able to talk. And he said, Lord, save me. So in other words, why, what, why, why? You know what? Jesus wanted him to see that you can depend on me. Any situation I got you in, I got you. It says here, he walked on the water. He came out of the ship, walked on the water to go to Jesus. He was outside of his comfort zone, right? But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. You got to see this. This is a fisherman. Everybody know he can swim. You don't go becoming a fisherman and you can't swim. So all that good stuff that you know goes out the window. And Jesus said, don't worry about it. I got you. He says, Lord, save me. Verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? Saints of God, you got to understand that many times when we fail, we fail because of doubt. We don't fail because of ability. We fail because of doubt. Many times we don't do what we could do because we doubt. Sometimes you just got to step out there into the deep water and say, you know what? God's got me. Am I right about it? You've got to step out there and say, look, whatever it is, for God I live, for God I die, I, it don't matter. I'm stepping out. I just believe that God is going to bring me out of this. You've got to step out of your comfort zone. Come on, man. Ain't but so much HBO, HGTV. Come on, now. CNN. Oh, baby. Come on, you got to get something up. You got to step out. You got to try a little faith sometime. Immediately, he stretched forth his hand. He said, okay, if you're a little faith, why did you doubt? Not only did we see the fall, but let's take a look at the fur. And when they were come into the ship, that's him and Jesus. When they were come into the ship, Jesus did get in the ship with them. Then they were in the ship. Well, I'm sorry, when they come in the ship, the wind ceased. Now, why would the wind cease after Jesus got into the boat? I believe that Jesus was the source of the wind. How come the winds and the seas obey him? Y'all heard him, peace be still before. Right? Right. So guess what? When he got in the boat, all of a sudden, all the problems went away. You got to keep Jesus in your boat. Everything you do, put Jesus in. Say, how can I do this and, and keep Jesus in? I don't care what it is. You want to go to the gym and pump iron? How can I, how can I pump iron and keep Jesus in it? Well, I know what. Every time I lift it up, I'm going to say a verse. Okay. Okay. Every time I gain a pound of muscle, I'm going to fast for an hour. Every time, I, every time I reach my next goal, I'm going to sing a gospel song. Come on, somebody. Every time I run five miles, I'm, I'm going to come back and I'm going to spend 15 minutes in prayer. You, you see what I'm saying? How you can just involve God in every... Let, put God in every boat that you're in. Everything that you do, get God involved with. You can't lose with the stuff you do. Come on, back. The fur, and when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Then, in verse 33, they that were in the ship, watch this, worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Mm. Now, here's where I find a problem with that. Here's where I find, find, find a problem with that, guys. Is, you, didn't think I, you didn't think I was the Son of God? <laughs> when I took five loaves of bread? <laughs> And two fishes, mm. and fed five thousand men. Mm. 
<laughs> you didn't think I was the Lord. <laughs> I went I had 12 baskets left over. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you didn't think I was the Lord. <laughs> when the woman touched the hem of my garment and she was healed from 12 long years of hemorrhage, <laughs> you didn't think that I was the Lord. <laughs> when I healed blind Bartimaeus, the black baby believer, <laughs> you didn't think that I was the Lord. <laughs> uh, when I walked through Capernaum, <laughs> healing all manner of disease, <laughs> you didn't think that I was the Lord. <laughs> uh, when I, 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 I showed up at Calvary's cross. You didn't think uh, um, that I was the Lord. And when I stopped by the, the neighborhood and started healing all kinds of people, and uh, you didn't think that I was the Lord. When I made the blind see and the lame walk, and, uh, you didn't think that I was the Lord. But when I made an axe head float, uh, you didn't think uh, that I was the Lord. So in closing, I'd like to say that if you want to improve yourself spiritually, you're going to have to step out of the boat of complacency and step into the water of tenacity. If you're going to step out of the boat of the ordinary and onto the water of extraordinary, you're going to have to step out of the boat of business as usual and onto the water of we ain't never seen it done like that before. You're going to step out of the boat of I'm tired into the water of I've been rejuvenated. You're going to step out of the boat of I'm exhausted into the water of I've been regenerated. You're going to step out of the boat of complaining into the boat of commending. I just want to say that you're going to have to step out of the boat. You're going to have to step out of the boat of I have done enough into the, the water of I can't do enough. You're going to have to step out of the boat of why don't they leave me alone into the water of will somebody ask me to do something? You're going to have to step out of the boat of receiving and into the water of giving. You're going to have to step out of the boat of tipping God into the water of tithing to God. You're going to have to step out of the boat of dying and onto the boat of resurrection. You're going to have to step out of the boat of awkward man perishing into the waters of inward man being renewed day by day. You're going to have to step out of the boat of living safely for yourself onto the waters of living recklessly for Christ. You're going to have to step out of the boat of staying close to the shore into the waters of the deep. Somebody say he ain't lying so far. If you're going to become a water walking worshiper, you're going to have to get your feet wet. So what does a Christian do to stimulate themselves spiritually? My answer to you is this. If you want to stimulate yourself spiritually, you're going to have to step out of the boat of comfortableness and on to the water of faith.
that go to each membership if they want. That is practically. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everyone. So um, I'm just going to get out your way because it's 1230. Promise to keep everybody here until 1230. Please stand. You're already standing. I'm going to get the benediction and get you home. If anybody would like to talk to uh, someone about salvation or joining the church, uh, deacons and deaconess, please put your hands up. Grab one of these people with their hands up, and they'll be able to lead you to Christ or show you how to join the church. All right? Okay, Amen. let's look to the Lord. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much. Thank we you. thank you, Lord God, for teaching us. Thank we got to step outside of the boat. We yes. got to step onto yes. the waters of unfamiliarity. Yes. Lord, thank you for your word. We pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that someone has been encouraged by your word today. We thank you for those who are here with us. We thank you for those who are pressing their way week after week, coming out to your service. Thank you, Lord God, for those who are giving, helping us to keep the doors of the church open. Thank you so much for all that you do in Jesus' name. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, and power, both now and forevermore, that the saints of God say, Amen. 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 Remember, I'll see you when I see you at CUC. God bless you.